Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 35 of 2021, appointing Dr. Yasser bin Isa Al Nasser and Yara Rida Faraj as coordinators at the Prime Minister's Court with the rank of Under Secretary. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 36 of 2021, restructuring the Board of Directors of the Education and Training Quality Authority, the BQA, under the chairmanship of Awa bin Taufik Al Mawayed. The Board of Directors comprises Yara Rida Faraj, Kazai Al Ali Al Rayad, Munta Abdullah Latif Al Madawi, Sara Isha Hassan, and Dalal Iqbal Sankur. The decree stipulates that the chairman and the first three members will serve a four-year term, while the remaining members will serve for a three-year term. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 37 of 2021, appointing Hussein Mohammad Rajab as Chief Executive Officer of the Labour Fund Tamkeen for a three-year term. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Law 5 of 2021 and the ratification of the Bahrain Maldives Agreement for the operation of air transport services between and beyond their respective territories, signed between the two governments at the headquarters of the International Civil Aviation Organization in Montreal. His Majesty also issued Law 7 of 2021, ratifying the statute of the Labour Centre of Organisation of Islamic Coordination after its approval by the Shura and Representatives Councils. The statute of the Labour Centre of the Organisation of Islamic Cooperation was approved by the OIC's Foreign Minister's Council in the 43rd session held in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, in October the 18th and 19th, 2016. The Prime Minister and Minister shall implement the provisions of the law. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 17 of 2021 to assign the following directors at the Ministry of Transportation and Communications. Wafa Jazm Mohammed Al Nusuf at the Information Technology Directorate. Aisha Salman Sanad bin Sanad at the Communications Directorate. And Salman Nabil Mohammed Shakib at the Commercial Affairs and Logistical Areas Directorate. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 18 of 2021 to amend Decision 1 of 2016 to appoint the following Royal Martyrs to the Duty Fund. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa as President. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa as Member. General Sheikh Rashid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa as Member. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa as Member. Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan al Nawemi as member. Major General Tarak Hassan al Hassan as member. Major General Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Saeed al Khalifa as member. Dr. Yusuf Rashid Falafel as a member. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 19 of 2021 to restructure the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, which has the following decision 27 of 2020. Sarah Ahmed Bahiji. His Royal Highness issued Edict 20 of 21 to appoint Mohammed Salman Mohsin Al Arayad as Director of Human and Financial Resources at the Civil Service Bureau. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also issued Edict 1 of 2021 and the reorganisation of the Economic Development Board. The Commander of the National Guard, Commander General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, met with the Prime Minister of Pakistan in Islamabad where he conveyed the regards of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who wished Pakistan enduring progress and prosperity. The two parties exchanged views on how to further bolster the bilateral ties in all fields in the interests of the two countries and peoples. Various issues of mutual interest were discussed during the meeting. For his part, the Pakistan Prime Minister praised the Kingdom of Bahrain's progress in all fields under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the government. He also praised the bilateral ties. His Highness thanked him for his warm reception and wished Pakistan further stability, security and prosperity. Also present were the Kingdom's ambassador to Pakistan, Mohammed Ibrahim Mohammed, and the director of the office of His Highness of the National Guard Commander, Major General Abdurrahman Rashid Assad. His Highness's visit to Islamabad comes in fulfilment of the Pakistani Army's chief at Kamajawad Bajwa in order to attend the Pakistan Day celebrations. His Highness was received by Nur Khan military base by senior officers from the Pakistani Army, along with the Kingdom's ambassador. 
under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and the Honorary President of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, a brief, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The endurance race competitions then carried on at the Bahrain Endurance Village with the participation of 250 stables and horsemen over the course of three days. His Highness affirmed that the event reflects the ongoing progress in Brief's organisational capacity and the leadership of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and with the international participation which elevates the level of competition. He said that the best possible performances have been put on display thanks to the high level of technical ability as is reflected by Bahrain's international achievements. His Highness expressed appreciation for the board ranging participation and fulfilled the support of all participants, wishing all success. The Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Committee to follow up of the implementation of the National Plan to promote the spirit of belonging to the nation and reinforce the values of nationalism, General Sheikh Rash bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired the committee's meeting in the presence of the Minister of Education, the Minister of Labour and Social Development, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Information, the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs and the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning for Municipality Affairs. The Interior Minister welcomed the committee members and delivered the following speech. يوم الشراكة المجتمعية هو الانتماء الوطني تزامنا مع مناسبة مرور عامين على تدشين الخطة الوطنية لتعزيز الانتماء الوطني وترسيخ قيم المواطنة بحريننا وأنه يسعدني أن أشيد بجهودكم المشكورة ومساهمتكم القيمة في متابعة تنفيذ مبادرات الخطة الوطنية التي تم وضعها انطلاقا من البرنامج الإصلاحي الشامل والرؤية الملكية السامية لسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعه من أجل تعزيز الانتماء الوطني وترسيخ الوحدة الوطنية وكذلك تأكيدا للاهتمام الدائم من صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد الأمين رئيس مجلس الوزراء الموقر حفظه الله ورعاه بأن يكون تعزيز الهوية الوطنية ضمن عمل الحكومة الموقرة وجزءا أساسيا من ثقافة الأجيال القادمة ولا يخفى عليكم أصحاب المعالي والسعادة إن مملكة البحرين تتعرض في الفترة الأخيرة للدعوات التحريضية والتقارير المنحازة الصادرة من أطراف ومنظمات خارجية وقنوات إعلامية مضللة بقصد شق الصف والتشكيك في الإنجازات الوطنية حيث تستهدف هذه الدعوات نشر الفوضى والنيل من الاستقرار الوطني ولكن البحرين تمكنت ولله الحمد بفضل قيادة وحكمة سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه من تجاوز ما واجهناه من تحديات وأزمات وخرجت منها أقوى منعة وأشد صلابة بفضل التلاحم الوطني بين القائد والشعب وفي هذا الشأن فإنني أسجل اعتزازي بالروح الوطنية التي تمثلت في عدم الالتفات لتلك الدعوات وما حملت في طياتها من إساءات للنيل من وحدتنا الوطنية وهذا الموقف البحريني المسؤول إنما هو تأكيد على التمسك بالهوية الوطنية وإدراك الجميع بدون استثناء بأهمية دورهم ومسؤوليتهم الوطنية في المحافظة على السلم الأهلي وإنما نعيش اليوم من تعاون وتآخي وأمل وطموح يضع الجميع أمام واجبهم الوطني لتعزيز المواطنة والهوية والانتماء وإنها تشكل فرصة وطنية لتعزيز الجبهة الأمنية الداخلية وبناء الكوادر الوطنية المخلصة لتكون مرتكزا لمسيرة البناء والتنمية ولتعزيز قيم الأخاء والتسامح بين مكونات المجتمع 
فقد تحررت الأصوات الصامتة وتجاوزنا حدود الطائفية لتعلو هويتنا الوطنية ويتعزز انتماؤنا للبحرين وإننا ولله الحمد ننتمي إلى بلد نشأته عروبية إسلامية وهي مصدر هويتنا وتراثنا كما إننا نؤمن بالتعايش والتعددية التي تعد جزءا أساسيا من حضارتنا وثقافتنا وليس التاريخ ببعيد فقد كان الموقف البحريني الرائع لأبناء الوطن عند التصويت على ميثاق العمل الوطني إجماعا شعبيا تفخر به الوطنية البحرينية في ظل قيارة حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه واليوم تأتي الروح الوطنية المخلصة التي ظهر بها فريق البحرين الوطني بقيادة صاحب السمو والملكي ولي العهد الأمين رئيس مجلس الوزراء الموقر حفظه الله ورعاه في متابعة جهود مكافحة جائحة كورونا والتي كانت محل إشادة من الهيئات والمؤسسات الدولية تأتي هذه الروح الوطنية لتجسد موقفا تاريخيا آخر يعبر عن عمق الإحساس الوطني في هذا البلد وبهذه المشاعر المخلصة أطلقت الخطة الوطنية لتعزيز الانتماء الوطني وترسيخ قيم المواطنة أكثر من مئة مبادرة وطنية تذكرنا بأهمية المحافظة على عاداتنا وتاريخنا الوطني ويطيب لي في هذه المناسبة أن أعرب عن شكري وتقديري لأصحاب المعالي والسعادة أعضاء لجنة المتابعة ولكافة الشركاء من الوزارات والمؤسسات الحكومية والخاصة والشكر موصول كذلك لأعضاء المكتب التنفيذي بحريننا ولتبغى غايتنا حماية الإحساس العميق بالوطنية لتجني البحرين ثمار مبادرات الانتماء الوطني أسأل الله أن يحفظ أمن البحرين واستقرارها في ظل قيادة سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورحمه The committee reviewed the updates of implementing the initiatives of the national plan. The briefing indicated that despite the exceptional circumstances imposed by the coronavirus pandemic, the national plan is proceeding in two parallel tracks. The first relates to settling an industrial regulatory framework to implement and maintain the plan's work, and the second to activating initiatives. According to the directives of the Minister of Interior, the committee focused on initiatives to revive popular heritage. It also reviewed the achievements in the field of implementing studies. The briefing highlighted the documentation of all works and developments and issuing updated copies of the National Plan. They also reviewed the advanced level of the response of the relevant authorities in implementing the National Plan. At the end of the meeting, the Minister of Interior expressed thanks and appreciation to the committee members for the positive interaction and support, and the official and civil authorities for their cooperation and patriotism. He also expressed appreciation for the media figures for their interaction and patriotic feelings that they expressed towards the initiatives of the National Plan, wishing everyone success in serving the Kingdom. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Chairman of the GCC's Ministerial Council, Abdul Latif Al Zawani, headed the 147th meeting in Saudi Arabia yesterday. In a statement during the opening speech, Dr. Al Ziani lauded the Al Ula summit and its outcomes, hailing the leaders of GCC countries and the keenness on maintaining the unity of the Gulf Cooperation Council. He condemned the recent terrorist attacks in Saudi Arabia by Houthi militia, praising the high efficiency and vigilance of the Royal Saudi Air Force and the coalition forces to support legitimacy in Yemen in countering all attacks. The Foreign Minister added that these attacks were denounced by GCC countries and all countries of the world as they all expressed support for Saudi Arabia and the action it takes to preserve its security and sovereignty. He also reiterated the Council's position that it adheres to safeguarding Arab national security and rejects all foreign interference in the internal affairs of GCC and Arab countries. He also called on ending the Houthi coup against legitimate authority in Yemen. 
He noted that the Cooperation Council wholeheartedly speaks to end conflicts in Arab countries in order for peace and security to prevail in Syria, Iraq, Libya and Somalia. The Ministerial Council discussed a number of reports submitted by the General Secretariat regarding the position of the Gulf action and the follow-up of the process of economic and development integration among GCC countries. It also discussed strengthening cooperation among member states in order to implement the decisions of the Supreme Council regarding ending the requirements for completing the customs union and the Gulf common market in order to achieve the economic unity by 2025. At the conclusion of the meeting, uh, Dr al Hajraf read the statement issued by the meeting as the Ministerial Council condemned the recent terrorist attacks in Saudi Arabia and expressed support for all the actions it takes to counter these attacks. The Minister of Housing, Basil Hammer, announced the opening of the main entrance to the East Hid project, which connects the dry dock with the nearby roads, along three kilometres, which is funded by the Gulf Development Project. The opening of the interest comes at a time when the number of residents in the nearby areas are increasing, thanks to the implementation of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's directives to distribute housing units there. The Minister said that the entrance is in line with the latest specifications that the Government has approved for its new projects, in terms of the number of lanes and the amount of traffic it can hold. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning for developing the nearby traffic junction. The University of Bahrain's Business Incubation Centre called on all students and alumni who have innovative ideas and inventions to present their ideas to the centre in order to receive support and guidance to establish their business. To speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by the Director of Business Incubator Centre at the University of Bahrain, Dr Isra Wali. Hello Dr Isra. Good evening everyone. Tell us about the role of the Business Incubator Centre and how you support students and alumni. Sure. Um, well, the Business Incubator Centre at the University of Bahrain helps all university affiliates, and of course this includes um, students and alumni, who have innovative ideas and of course inventions to create and grow businesses and startups. Now, in terms of the support that we provide to our um, entrepreneurs at the university, we usually run an entrepreneurial study program as well as a pre-incubation program every semester where students are going to be engaged in numerous um, seminars, workshops on different topics where we also host um, industry experts and entrepreneurs, of course, um, startups, um, regional and international, to share their expertise and shed light on their entrepreneurial journey with our startups at the university. We also provide access to our specialized faculty members at the university and most importantly mentorship and consultation with experts and entrepreneurs, of course uh, in Bahrain and of course international. We do also support our startups through commercialization assistance, working space with minimal costs, um, access to specialized lab facilities, resources, and equipment at the university, as well as help them to seek grants and investor funding um, on later stages. So once our startups feel um, they are ready to work on their business ideas, we take these ideas to the next step. We sign an incubation contract with, with them to support them even further. And how can those who are interested reach you and what advice would you give them? Um, we can be reached through um, our um, uh, website where we have all um, contact details in there. We can also be um, contacted through our um, Instagram account which is UOB underscore incubator where uh, people could find all details in terms of the incubator, our activities and also resources that are open to the public. We usually meet our um, startups uh, on a one-to-one -one basis where we discuss their ideas and evaluate how the Business Incubator Center at the university can support them. In terms of the advice that we give students, if you think you have an idea that is innovative and addresses a real problem, first um, validate this idea through customers, understand who your customers are, what are their needs, and of course, form a team who you will be working with 
And if you need any help, um, we are here to support you through your entrepreneurial journey. Thank you. And that was the director of the Business Incubation Centre at the University of Bahrain, Dr. Isra Wali. Cementing its position at the forefront of aviation and logistics training in the MENA region, the Gulf Aviation Academy, the GAA, has recently announced it received the certification of an approved training organisation from the Bahrain Civil Aviation Affairs and the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications to launch its own air traffic control training. To talk to us more about that, we are pleased to be joined on the phone by the GAA's Manager of Commercial and Ground Training, Mr. Yosef Hassan. Can you tell us about the process for GAA to become an approved training organisation to launch its own air traffic control training and how this can contribute to further developing the aviation sector in Bahrain, the Gulf and the region? Sure. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, GAA had always the vision to serve the, uh, the industry as the primary aviation training provider in the kingdom and the region. Uh, the ATC Training Center comes to further complete the training products currently provided to our local and international clients. Uh, so this will contribute, uh, this will expand GA's contribution to the uh, local economy. Uh, in order to get um, this certification, uh, first of all, GA had to initially ensure that all international requirements set by the International Civil Aviation Organization are adhered to uh, as, uh, as well as the uh, local Bahrain Civil Aviation Affairs. By the way, I would like to uh, uh, to thank uh, Bahrain CAA for their uh, support uh, and make this uh, achievement happen. Um, this will make uh, a great, a great uh, support for the industry uh, and uh, will minimize the cost of the uh, of the buddies who would like to take this uh, training in Bahrain instead of traveling abroad uh, far away in, in uh, an approved and other another group the uh, training centers. And what are the GAA's other future projects in the coming phase? Uh, we currently um, we always looking forward to expand uh, our training network internationally by opening uh, satellite centers globally, giving our international clients the opportunity to access our training programs more easily and uh, closer. Uh, also, since the pandemic, we have started transforming our training programs into a digital form to enable online delivery where applicable only. Uh, the, the academy is also uh, embarking on market uh, technologies such as augmented and virtu virtual uh, reality training solutions. So uh, this will expand our training portfolio to include uh, also maritime and soft, uh, soft skills training. Um, uh, GE is proudly uh, awarded as uh, outstanding rating by uh, uh, BQA and we always look forward to uh, further development. And that was the manager of the commercial and ground training at the Gulf Aviation Academy. Thank you, Mr. Hassan. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 374,873 had taken the first dose of the vaccine while 222,573 had taken the second. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,566, with 577 recoveries and 768 registered new cases. 289 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 451 are contacts of active cases and 28 are travel related. The deceased were a 62-year-old male citizen and 67-year-old female citizen. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.